All right, so uh, we, um, Dr. Horiba, can you uh, stay on the line in case someone has questions? Yes. Just a few yes, more minutes. absolutely. I'm just trying to unshare my screen, but you can. No, no problem. Yes, I'll be here. I'll be here. Excellent. So, okay. Any, uh, so the floor is open for questions. I know this is getting late in the day and late in the conference. All right. Okay, Dr. Gors. Yeah, I have a question for uh, Matish. So I was, I was noticing during Dr. Bridgewater's presentation, several of the patients had MCL1 amplification, and there's two drugs in trials for MCL1, one by AstraZeneca, another by uh, uh, Genentech. So I was wondering <coughs> if you had thought about an arm for the MCL1 amplifications. Yeah, this would be a reasonable consideration. I think the preclinical data uh, is emerging uh, and, and has been in the works for some years uh, in terms of identifying this as a potential target. Uh, it happens to be in a region that's sort of broadly amplified. So I think identifying those patients where this is a driver, like the other alterations we're pursuing, uh, might help facilitate sort of higher chance of success if we pursued a sort of non-specific type of approach, such as targeting an MCL1 inhibitor. Thank you. Juan? Uh, thank you. Again, a question on uh, biomarkers. We focus very much on tissue and blood, um, but there's one other arena where we're collecting huge amounts of data, which I believe is completely underused, and that's in imaging. Now, patients are having sequential imaging, longitudinal imaging, multimodality imaging. I wonder what your thoughts are on, on how we should uh, be looking at applying some of the imaging biomarkers, maybe uh, in, in, in the sort of biomarker setting, but then also in the neoadjuvant assessment of patients. Yeah, so I wish Dr. Uh, Vivek Wadwa was here. He would love it, right? So uh, may, maybe application of AI uh, to these images as the diagnostic method uh, may start yielding uh, that type of approach um, until it's as digital and reliable as um, a sequencing where you can distinguish whether there's a mutation or not. Uh, it'll sort of be more conceptual, but certainly very much worthwhile um, uh, pursuing it because we're going to be collecting so many images from thousands of patients. Uh, it, it, it seems like the next reasonable thing to do. Hmm? Yes. I say from, the, um, neo -adjuvant, from the neo adjuvant side of things, I think it's um, again a proof of concept type of situation still. But if you were, I think the, the goal is to do it in a prospective fashion and in an, under a protocol where people are actually getting the right imaging making, but you can't make, I don't think you can make therapeutic decisions off that yet, but at least collect the information. And then when you do the operation, you have the, the specimen to validate, and then you can actually start informing trial design later. So I think that's the stage we are from a neoadjuvant perspective. Any, any further questions? Uh, quick question, Dr. Horiba, can we have access to your slides by any chance? Uh, yes, absolutely. I will send them um, to I will send them to Donna Mayor, and um, she can circulate them. Wonderful. That'll be extremely helpful. Well, thank you. I know it's getting late up in the, your neck of the woods. Uh, so I think if there are no further questions, we're going to conclude this session and take ten minutes break. Thank you. <laughs>